All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and introduce Hannah. Um, Hannah joined us for the first time last week and she uh, wanted to talk about the conversation about how do you make friends with a disability? Um, and I was like, oh, I never thought about that. Um, but I can remember a time in my life when making friends was hard. Uh, and I felt it was because of my disability, but as I got older, I, I realized, no, it was just because I was probably not very confident in who I was. Um, but that's just my take on disability. Um, and so I, you know, thought, no, oh, that's a good topic. So I'm going to turn it over to Hannah. Um, Hannah, if you want to just go ahead and take the reins and introduce yourself and maybe why you wanted to talk about this subject. Hi, my name is Hannah, and today's topic is friendship, and I wanted to talk about friendship because I've, with my disabilities, I've had trouble making friends before, and so I thought people could relate. And I had a couple of questions for y'all to start the top, 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 top topic um how has your disability affected your friendships how has having a disability affect you making friends and the third question is how do you make friends okay so um do you want to just do one question at a time first and then we can have yeah two. that'll be good okay so what was your first question again how has your disability affected your friendships? Okay. So, would anyone like to go first? Yes, Jessica. Um, for those of you who are new and don't know, um, I am a left baloney amputee. I lost my leg um, due to a blood clot. I was 29, um, I'm now 32. And at the time, um, I was in the hospital for six weeks. And, um, you know, people do the usual, oh, my God, she's in the hospital. I should go see her. And, you know, I had a lot of visitors. And a lot of my friends did show up. But when it came down to, you know, I'm being discharged, I'm being, you know, prepared to, tr you know, transition to to life at home, um, everybody just disappeared. And these are friends that I had for years and years. So it, it was very painful to, you know, know that nobody was there for me. Um, no visits, no phone calls. And at the time, I mean, it was, it was in December and you know, I live in Iowa. <laughs> we get ice, we get snow. And um, me just even going outside, it, it was extremely dangerous for me. Um, so for my safety, I would, I, I would have, I would prefer to have people come over, you know, instead of me hopping around on one leg and God only knows what could happen. Um, so that's, that's basically like my sad story in a nutshell. <laughs> um, it was, and I struggled with it for a long time. I'm, I still have my days where I'm, I'm angry at everybody for just walking out because it's like that, that you just don't do that to somebody, you know, you say you care, you say you're their friend, you know, friends, friends help friends no matter what it's like if if this was somebody that I knew or that I was close with I would have dropped everything and came over and said hey I'm so sorry for what happened you know I'm here what do you need you know that's what you should do and I've heard from you know I've, I've talked to people and um the ones that around here that do know um they, they brought up an interesting point but it's it's still not an excuse. Um, and the point was, you know, maybe they just didn't know, um, like how to deal with it. They didn't know 
what to do. And that may be true, but that's, that's not an excuse. You just, you just don't do that to people. You don't abandon them when they need you the most. So Mm -hmm. that's my story. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. That's not an easy story. Not at all. Go ahead, Priya. Um, well, Jessica, I think you and I, similarly, we were disabled later in life, you know, after we had made friends. And, and so I was fortunate because I had a family. And so after I became disabled, I just moved in with my parents for a little while. And my partner came with me. So, and then I actually had friends because I didn't live in the same town as my friends. Like I ended up leaving. So I had friends that actually called and, you know, checked up on me. But then as time went by, that just stopped. And I kind of, I always think to myself because like now things are much worse for me than when I was first injured because I, I have, you know, I have chronic pain. It's really much harder for me to do things. And you know, I get bummed out and stuff. And like when I first had my injury, people would call, like you said, they call or check up on you. Um, but then after a while, like they don't really call anymore. And cause then, you know, we have this like thing we say, get, Oh, I hope you feel better soon. Or I hope you get well soon. But the thing is when you have a disability that getting well soon, isn't a thing that actually happens. You just, have to live with whatever's happening and and yeah so my friends just didn't call and I and I feel like telling them it's like you were you called me so much when I first and now you don't ever call me again but I do have noticed with the pandemic some of my friends are calling because now they're stuck at home and maybe they're paying attention to some, so they are calling me, you know, I, you know, a couple, not a lot of my friends, but you know, a couple of them and stuff. And I do have to say the best friends I do have are from Chattanooga because I really feel if I was living there, they would come visit me and help me because that's like the, the friends I have in Chattanooga are very, like, we're very tight and they're like some of my oldest friends. So if I was like, I'm bored, can you come? And they'd be like, yeah, Priya, I'll come. You want me to bring you food? <laughs> you know, so, so, <laughs> so I thought of moving to Chattanooga, but it's in Tennessee, and I'm already set up medically here, so I don't really want to shift to that because it's more important. The medical thing's kind of more important currently to me than the friendship because if, you know, medically I'm not being taken care of, then my friends won't really matter at that point. So, so it's kind of weird. You kind of have to choose what's better, you know, one or the other in a way. But yeah, so I, I totally relate to what you're saying, Jessica, about, you know, how. And yeah, I just think people, because I'm the same way. If like one of my friends was hurt, I'd just probably be calling them, seeing how they were doing. But, you know, not everyone's like that. So it's just like, And you often like think people should be like you are, but they aren't. And that's like the one hurdle you have to get over is that just because you're a certain way doesn't mean all the people you're friends with are going to be that way. You know, everyone's the way they are, you know, and you just have to accept it or not accept it, you know. So that's like the way I feel about people. And I guess it's just, I just can't comprehend it. Like, you know, yeah, I understand it, but I just have to be like, well, I like them because I like talking to them about this. So I just got to not think about them not right. being there for me. That's like how I look at it because, you know, you are that type of person, which is a great, but you know, that doesn't mean the people you're friends with are going to be like that or can even mentally handle it in a way, you know, like, cause it's a lot of, I don't know, it's this empathetic feel. It's this empathy you have that a lot of people don't have, you know, and it's just the way it is, which is sad and unfortunate. Yep. <laughs> you, just a follow up question on that. Um, then I want to go back to like, so give other people a chance to, to answer um 
about how is you feel like your disability impacts your ability to make friends but uh do you feel like because so we have priya jessica and renee who have acquired disabilities later in life um do you feel like that they don't know how to relate to the new you um i yeah i think people are very that's why i like to talk about disability out in the open so people aren't uncomfortable because i think people have this hesitation when something like that happens to you they don't really know what to say or they don't they don't really know what to do or how to be so yeah i think it has a little bit to do with that and it takes me to be like like i would have to go to my friend's house even though their house isn't accessible and i would like I, you know, I've told you before, I crawl up the stairs and do stuff, but it was important for me to be socially active. So I would put myself in this position where physically I'm not, it's not convenient for me to get into their house, but I would just make it happen because that was important to me. But then sometimes I think like, why can't they come to my house? Like, like exactly dude come to my house don't inconvenience me yeah, or, I, you know I, I don't mind going to people i like going to other people's houses if i can get in there but it's just like this weird thing where people don't want to come to your house too so it's just this bizarre i don't understand it i don't know but i think you notice it a lot more <laughs> when you after you become disabled you're like oh that person it was so great before I became disabled and now they don't even call me. What's going on? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Cecil, did you want to say something? Oh my goodness. This is bringing up so much, you know, <laughs> gosh, uh, I wanted to say Cecil was also disabled after, you know, he wasn't oh, born. Okay. okay. Go ahead. Often a car uh, in 2003 and um 2004 i was diagnosed with the uh uh cerebellar ataxia so, so it's a new condition so, so it progresses over the years so imagine you being able i'm still am able but you your body is slowly changing over time um so I think Priya touched on a lot of being as well. I think for me, people change, and that was the hardest thing for me um, to deal with. And I had to be okay with that. I had to um, meet new friends, you know, yeah. uh, step outside of the box, and you know, um, a lot of people be there for me, you know. Um, I think sometimes as I dis being disabled, sometimes we isolate ourselves from people, you know. Um, to just um, give that person the opportunity, um, you know, to understand and if they do great, you know, and let them know what you need. Um, so I've been, uh, I go to a therapist and she said, well, see, so people don't know unless you tell them what you need to know. And um, if they want to uh, work with you, they will. If they don't, well, that's fine. And um, you have to let go. I think that was the hardest thing for me, uh, being disabled. It's like, you know, we were so close. What happened? What did I do? And you start putting yourself, putting yourself on the good trip. And, and I was like, well, maybe it's not just me. Maybe it's them. Because sometimes people will make decisions for you. Like, uh, maybe this is too much for them. Uh, maybe I don't want to invite them to the spent. I'm like, well, ask me, give me the opportunity to express that, you know, and even if I don't want to participate, but still um, ask me, and I will tell you. Um, 
And along the way, you just have to learn how to, uh, for me, for me, I had to learn how to be my best, my own best friend and do what makes me happy. You know, guys, you can be around a lot of people and still be lonely. Mm. You know, so. Uh, Some people uh, are around a lot of people and are lonely. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, the, I, I think I am to end with this. Um, is I reached a point, um, it happened when the diagnosis happened when I was 20. I'm 36 now. And I reached a point in my life, is he, is he the me or them? And now I choose me. I know I'm a great person. If you don't, that's, some, that's your loss. So that's really how I am. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that comes with confidence. And I, I, and, I totally relate to you. I, sometimes I forget, you sometimes forget like the painful experiences. Um, I guess kind of like giving birth. People are like, oh, I forgot because six kids later. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I only have one because I never forgot. But I did, <laughs> but I did forget like, yeah, like a friend of mine and we were roommates and she was telling me about her birthday party and, and I'm like, Oh, and she's like, oh, well, I didn't invite you because I didn't think it was accessible. And I'm like, wow, well, I feel like I would have liked the opportunity to say, well, it's not accessible, so it's okay. I don't need to come, right? But at least, um, like, at least. Yeah, consider. invite really what's the important thing. <laughs> it's like, it's like people kind of make these decisions. They're like, oh, I'm not going to invite her because it's not accessible, but you feel left out when that happens. So yeah, it really, it should, like people need to learn, like I'm gonna invite her and if she can't come, she'll just say no or, or he, he right. or she. And then I have friends now who are like, who they take initiative, cause we're like, they're, tomorrow we're all, there's a few families, we're all renting a big house with their own pool and fire pits and all that. And it'll be really fun. Um, and it's on the other side of the island and there's lots of beaches over there and they were calling around looking for beach beach chairs. They were, you know, like ta talking about maybe going in on it as a friend group to buy a beach chair, which is like $2,000 or making one or something. And I didn't know that they were doing all this work on my behalf to make sure I felt included or at least had the option. Um, and I, you know, I feel like as we get older, um, I, our friends change, you know, our friends are, the, some of our friends are there for a season and others for a lifetime. Um, but as I've gotten older, the quality of friendships and their willingness to accept me with all my limitations and saying, you're part of us anyway, so we're going to make it happen, you know? And so like that just like it fills my heart so much to have those kinds of friendships. So any, if anyone feels like they don't have that right now, like there's hope, like it, it happens, right? It, it, it will come into your life. Um, so, but I wanted, like, I don't know for anyone that was born with, or had their disability early on um, with a disability. Yeah, Freddie, what are your thoughts on friendship? Um, I'm a 32 year old with, cerebral palsy and I was actually born with cerebral palsy so I've had it all my life. I require about 95 to almost 98% physical care so I almost need everything done for me. I can operate my electronics like phone, computer and all of that but besides that I need everything done for me. Um, so I have my own apartment, but I have a, a live-in roommate, and he stays with me. He's also uh, my provider, so there's that. But as far as the friend aspect, I totally agree. It's very hard for me to make friends because um, I require so much physical gear, and then I also have bulging disc and arthritis in my back. So it's like really hard on me when we do like transfers and whatnot. And so I'm pretty much 
homebound. And then where I live, we don't have public transportation. And so I have to require my roommate to take me places and everything. And so I'm basically just a homebody. If it wasn't for social media, I really wouldn't have friends or acquaintances because I, I look at it, at it as more of a acquaintances than friends really because people on Facebook you really don't t- talk to like every single day you know what I mean so that's yeah. not really considered a friend like I, I feel like a true definition of a friend, like if you're really good friends, you're at least gonna talk at least once a week. You know what I mean? Like, so that's my take on the whole friend thing. Well, I'm glad you find your found your way here because we talk once a week, <laughs> at least. And I mean, I feel even though this is virtual, I do feel very close to quite a few people here. So um, thank you so much for, you know, reaching out and joining. Freddie actually joined my per- my other group called Victoriously Living. And I, I put that, that group is around how do we live a life of victory? And he's like, oh, well, he was helping me out with some issues on the Facebook and he didn't know me and he, he totally helped me out. And but it takes courage to like put yourself out there, right? To put yourself and say, hey, yeah, go ahead. Well, and I found you through your uh, YouTube account with uh, One Like Out Productions. Ah, thank Ooh. you. <laughs> That's how I found you because you were uh, recommended under oh. the recommended spot on YouTube. So. Woo! I didn't even know that. I have goosebumps. Yeah. (laughs) That's how I found you, so. Yay, well, spread the word. I mean, we, you know, I created this this, uh, community because I just, I don't know, it was put on my heart. But sometimes I just do stuff, follow my heart, but um, it usually works out. So um, thank you for doing that. Uh, Denise, oh, oh, sorry, go ahead. Just a little bit more about me. I also grew up in a uh, group home because I was kind of shifted from home to home to home until I finally ended up in a group home for people with disabilities. It was called the Bob Hope School in Port Arthur, Texas. And I stayed there for uh, about six years until... I couldn't live there anymore because I graduated high school, so it was time for me to live on my own. So since you had your disability at, um, from birth, how was it making friends in school? It was very difficult because I also cannot physically write, so I had to have an aid to go around with me to every classroom so the my peers thought that they could not be themselves because I always had to be around an adult to physically take care of me Mm -hmm. so it was very difficult yeah yeah it's hard to be a 13 year old talking about what 13 year olds do when there's a 30 year old in the group (laughs) Right. So, yeah. 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 Well, and then maybe that's something in the future that we can talk about. How do you um, maintain your autonomy when you require caregiving, right? Or, you know, someone to be with you all the time. Um, Right. For some of us with more extreme disabilities, that's a requirement. And that's a, it's a fine line to toe with that. Right. Um. Denise, I know you were born, you, know, you weren't born, but you were, you had your disability when you were a baby. Did you want to add anything about how it was to make friends with a disability? 
Um, I had my disability when I was 18 months old, so I don't really have a memory of that time before. <laughs> so, um, growing up, I I made friends, but I I kind of I think I kind of had to like prove myself to them, and some of it was like trying to fit in more than just them accepting me, you know? So it was kind of a, kind of hard, you know, to do that. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but, um, yeah ki kids are cruel, like, <laughs> growing up. Um, they think on me like they'd call me an earthquake, you know? It's just cruel. They called you earthquake? But Is that what you said? I kind of, um, yeah, they call me earthquake because I'd shake all the time. Mm -hmm. And um, it was just a hard time, you know? Um, making friends yeah yeah just anything to find a way to um make fun of me like they said my parents were siblings <laughs> and that was kind of cruel <laughs> yeah so yeah. i don't yeah. It's just any way to make themselves feel better, I guess, is what they say you fun as something is, you know. But I kinda had to um I kinda had to put that past me and say like, well then I thought it was the most biggest Thing in the world, but now I <laughs> I could I could care less, you know. Like people aren't they're not worth it, you know. <laughs> if someone's gonna belittle you and and put you down all the time, you don't need that in your life, right? So, uh, <laughs> Je oh, Jessica, you're raising your hand. Yeah. Um, I can totally relate to that. I mean, I wasn't disabled my whole life, but like when I was the kid, I was bullied constantly. I was picked on because I was never, I was never the pretty girl. I was never the popular girl. I was never the skinny girl. I had always struggled with um, my weight my whole life um, up until like my mid twenties. And um yeah, like, I, I can totally relate to the bullying and the, you know, the belittling and the, the criticism and the, you know, being cut down and, you know, made to feel worthless. I get it. I do. I've dealt with that my whole life. Um, so I guess it just, you know, not, how do I want to put this? Um, it happens to everybody, whether we're disabled or, you know, able-bodied. Bullying happens to everybody. There's there's really no discrimination when it comes to that. So I just kind of wanted to toss that in there. Yeah. Yeah. Around and then because I was Indian and I had a you know weird name. Yes, and people called me Perina Dothchild. If that makes you feel better. Oh my gosh, that's terrible. <laughs> Yes, uh, Purina, yeah, so Darvo. <laughs> oh like, my God! So yeah, kids yeah. are mean. <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Disabled is because I didn't have a. Disability. Okay, I have to rephrase that. Kids aren't. Kids aren't just mean. Um, kids can be assholes. <laughs> 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 Say it. 
kids can be assholes. <laughs> yes, they- yes, kids can be assholes. <laughs> But yeah, then over time, like as I got older, I did gain my, you know, I went to college and then I gained my confidence, which played well for me after I became disabled because, you know, like, you know, I met Cecil, I'm like, this guy's great, let me get your number. So I'm just like in this mode where I don't, I am kind of like, I don't care who wants to be friends with me or not, but if I like someone, I'll, you know, be like, hey, let's connect and say hi to each other sometimes but i'm not really in this mode of where i'm waiting to be my friend type of thing you you know when when you're younger it's it's a big deal like i i feel like i was ready to just end my life because constantly being bullied like that, bombarded with people that call you names, you know, it, it gets to you. Uh, yeah. Uh, it does. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely it does. And it just, because when you're a child, you know, you you have no other reference. You don't know if it's going to change when you're older. You just think that that's what it's going to be all your life, you know? Yeah, true. But then when you get older, it's like you have more um you have more experiences. So you could look at that situation and say, you know, I really don't want this in my life anymore, you know. I'm just going to leave you <laughs> so yeah yeah you know i'm curious for the people that got their disability later in life um so you had a, a way of or a commonality of making friends did that change after you became disabled and, and what is that how do you make okay i'm sorry denise i'm gonna put you on mute because there's like wind or something because they're in beautiful nature yeah. <laughs> yeah go ahead yeah go yeah ahead. go for it yeah well me um believe me i totally understand you know i've been bullied you know uh i've had those dark times in my life so when you hear me speak, it comes from experience. So it's like I have my time. So um, I think for me, I try my, I'm going to ask you a question about my kind of death to stage. My whole life, when I was three years old, I was diagnosed as being hidden pain. So I'm, I am hard of hearing. So, um, I was in the special ed class. So I was flying, so I had people, I had people who were special ed in special ed classes, and also my friends that were, you know, in mainstream. So I was like, well, I wanna, I wanna be like them. I wanna be with them. You know, I want to be normal, you know, you know, uh, you know, this is not who I am, you know. Uh, so I just kind of, had the whole perception throughout life, like striving to be normal. But later on in life, I realized that being who I, I am, it will make me unique. Having this disability makes me even more unique. So when I embrace who I am, not trying to be somebody that I'm not, um, I'm being, I'm being true to myself. So, you know, I just be friendly, um, you know, with everybody, you know. Uh, and, you know, uh, people are drawn to me because of my attitude, my positive attitude. So it's like, so it has to start with the first. You love yourself and, you know, being happy and, 
you know, being a friendly person, you know, and that uh, people are drawn to me. I don't, I don't count, I don't chase no one no more. You know, uh, I just be who I am. And, um, and you know, um, that made the shift forward to me, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, just, just, just be friendly to people, even the people who are mean. I think people are often mean to us because they don't understand. People are quick to criticize something that they don't understand. So, you know, just uh, be who you are. Yeah. That's the best advice that um, I can give you on that. Um, Stop it. Yeah. Freddie, did you want to say something? I don't know if that, that was your hand up or if you're putting your glasses up. Nope, you're good. Okay. <laughs> um, I, 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 and I said that in the beginning, right? Like I thought it was my disability that was help, impeding my friendships from the beginning, like when I was younger. But then I just, as I got older, I realized, oh, maybe it was just because I was not com comfortable and confident with myself. So how do I expect other people to be comfortable in, with me? So I, I have the same approach to life is that philosophy. And one of the things that I'll be talking about with Shaped by Disability is I feel like my disability is a friend filter, right? It kind of weeds out the superficial people who are just, you know, like we may have some things in common, like, oh, it's your party friends. But, you know, <laughs> the friends that you can have like real deep conversations call it like midnight because you broke down in your car like those are different kinds of friends and i feel like um my disability does provide that filter right i didn't like even my husband i didn't he was the first guy i really dated and and then um, got married and you know i didn't have to deal with a bunch of stupid stuff with guys because they weren't stuck on the superficial so um yeah go ahead priya I think even if you get bullied, like Jessica and me, we were talking about, you be, you know, not because we're disabled, but just bullying. I think that essentially is a filter too, because my brother, like when we would move, my brother was really popular. He would always make friends and it took me like two years before I made someone that I wanted to be friends with. And then my dad was like, oh, it's time to move. I'm like, no, I just made friends. So like, <laughs> but I feel like my brother, because he, I feel like he's a little more, I love him, of course, so I'm just telling you, I love my brother, but I think he has this superficialness to him that I don't, because he, like, was, like, kind of popular and made friends and, like, always had, like, a friend group, and I was, like, kind of a loner and didn't have a lot of friends, and I just kind of noticed that now in our older life that he kind of freaks out about a lot more th now that we're older and our parents aren't here. He, I feel like he freaks out a lot more about things than I do. Like, I'm like, Oh, well, let's just see how to deal with this, you know? And he's just like, no, it has to be like, then I'm like, well, no, it doesn't. <laughs> so I just kind of noticed that just between me and my brother, like just seeing how he deals with conflict or something stressful in life in comparison to myself so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how about you renee you, we haven't i don't know if you want wanted to add anything or oh you're on mute first of all we can't hear you <laughs> well no it's just that um i don't have much to add to what everyone's saying it's such a big issue in my life it's been a big issue for years and so it's like i can't really blame my problems with making friends on my disability because I had kind of this problem before I got disabled. So I can't really say, oh, I mean, I could say it, but it's not really true. <laughs> you know, I got some, I've got some issues. And um, I think that I was breaking into law. I graduated law school when my son was five years old, got divorced. And I was here I am, a single mom breaking into a profession like law, which is really hard. And just one thing, right, the time thing right there was just like incredible. I didn't have time to hang out, make friends, you know. So I just, you know, it had, and, and the friendships I had, and I think this might be true for a lot of lawyers and maybe for other professions, is that I had a lot of lunches 
and a lot of um, you know after work things to do if I could get there. And all around work. We were talking cases. We were talking to and then when I got disabled, I stopped working. And all of a sudden, there was nothing to talk about with these guys anymore. I mean, it would be nice to hear from them, but I understand why they dropped out of my life pretty much. I'm not sure it was my disability as much as I'm guessing it's going to happen to them too when they retire and they drop out of, you know, the game, so to speak. I don't think they're going to have friends if that's been their focus. Um, but so I've always had that issue with, with, with friendship. And I also have issues with like, somebody once said when I first graduated law school and I got my first job, one of the lawyers in the office said, Renee just doesn't hang out. And I always thought it was because of time, you know, like taking care of my kid, running around, running around. Um, but I also, like I have this thing in my head, like just hanging out is like a waste of time. Like I got to be doing something. I got to be productive. I, and this is probably not very healthy, <laughs> but it's always like, I feel like even like I've, you guys have noticed, like sometimes I'll be downstairs in the basement and I'll have this lawn and I'll be doing the laundry at the same time. Like I've got to be doing something all the time. I don't mean to be disrespectful. I'm trying not to do that anymore. <laughs> no, it's totally fine. It, it, it's just, it's just, uh, it gets in the way of making friendships. And, um, but I like what you're talking about. I do did notice there are some people that, don't get it. There were a few people that reached out. There was one woman that reached out who was a lawyer. We went out to lunch a few times, and she'd always say to me, but you're handling this so well. You seem so happy and content. And I'd be like, I'm happy and content because you're here, and I'm having lunch with you. I, I, I don't know why that was a surprise, but I'd get happy when people reached out and we'd go out. Yeah, sure, I looked happy and content at that moment. I said, but you're not living with me. You don't see me at 8 o'clock at night. <laughs> yeah, screaming. Right. 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 <laughs> so anyway, I just wanted to throw that. It's a Can I ask? What was that? Well, it's like. Oh, I was just going to ask oh. something after you're done. Sorry. No, that's okay. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead, ask. Um, I was just, I was just wondering, um, when you bring up your disability to your friends? I, 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 what was the question? <laughs> I'm sorry. When, when you bring up your disability to your friends, because, yeah. When do you bring your disability up to your friends? Yeah, in a relationship. I, I don't know. It's just out there. I'm, I'm physically, I mean, I don't have to bring it up. It's just there. Oh. At this point, I'm, I mean, I'm, I, my mobility is limited. And, and well, her mobility is not invisible. No, well, it's not. I guess I'm, I'm talking about for other people that have a more hidden disability, I guess. Right. I think Sorry. all of us don't have a hidden disability like we can't pass <laughs> yeah, so we wouldn't be able to speak from experience unless like jessica i don't know maybe do you feel like some people don't notice it right away and then um i guess in a way like it's invisible but not because i walk so well and i do try to hide it just for the simple fact that i just want to be like everybody else you know and i don't want to be judged based on my disability so yeah i mean if if anybody asks like the only time you'd ever notice because i wear jeans all the time um the only time you'd ever really notice my prosthetic is when i sit down because then you'll see like the top of the socket just kind of bulge out a little bit um as my knee bends and i haven't really had anybody ask me about it um I've been asked if I'm a military vet I get that I am asked that all the time <laughs> which in a sense I think is kind of unfair to the, the military veterans because yeah. like, you see you see you know an amputee and you automatically think oh they got blown up by an IED or 
you know, they got shot in the wrong place and lost their leg or, you know, there's, there's such a stigma attached to it. And people just automatically assume I'm military. And it's like, no, there's, there's tons of other ways to lose a limb. I mean, dude, just Google it. <laughs> so, I mean, mine was a blood clot. I've known others that um, lost their limbs to cancer, um, you know, things like that. Uh, like a, a, a deformity when they were born. And so they had to get rid of the limb. Um, you know, there's all kinds of ways to lose a limb, whether it's your leg, your, your arm, you know, or even like fingers and toes. I mean, it, shit happens. <laughs> and, you know, you're just, you're kind of left dealing with the aftermath. Um, I think a, a lot of, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Sorry. Oh, no, you, go ahead. Go ahead, Renee. You're fine. No, I just, uh, I, one of the things, one of the ways I've done friendships in the past is to, I do dinners, like we'll have dinner or we'll eat. Maybe it's Italian to me. And so I cook and I'm, I'm doing the hostess thing. And that's really hard to do right now. And I still haven't figured out a way of sub, like substituting that. Like, what do I do now? Like, how do I do a dinner? I mean, I love sitting around the table with people. How do I do that if I'm not cooking? I mean, in getting food to go. I mean, I don't know if anybody's got any ideas how that works. Oh, so you're, you're, you're trying to adapt to your situation. Um, can I can I ask you what your disability is? Who? Where are you? Oh, um, I got an MS later on in life. So okay. I've had MS. It's degenerative. So it's like when I first got it, I was still working. Now it's like 12 years later, and I'm using walkers, wheelchair, you know, that kind of thing. So now well, it's. I suggest potlucks to you, because then everybody food and you sit around the table and eat. Yeah. And then you make them clean up. Then you make them help you clean up. Oh, no, that's it. not right. I can't invite people over and tell them to bring food. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> you know, my parents had a potluck wedding. Way to be a baller on a budget. <laughs> awesome. I've never heard of that. I've never heard of that. Well, so, you know, I, um, I, I love to host d dinner parties or parties. Our home is very set up, much set up for gatherings. Um, and people, I, I always wonder, I don't know if this is something you guys have thought about, like, what is it that I give you guys that to make such, such concessions, such compromises, right? So everyone will come over here. I provide the house, like paper plates and stuff. They'll all bring the food, and then they'll all clean up for my house afterwards. Oh, like, nice! Right. Now those are friends you don't want to lose. Those people. Best <laughs> 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 party, Pauline, is if they clean up after themselves. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, and that's the thing. I mean, they don't clean up my whole house, but they make sure like the dishes are done and the counters are wiped down, and you know. And it's like this, but I, I wonder, I'm like, what is it that I give you that makes you go so far to make sure I'm included, right? And like, well, I've had friends build ramps to into, into their house. Well, maybe they just love you. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. exactly. Well, Pauline, you're freaking awesome. No. <laughs> <laughs> like what Jessica and I were saying some people are really nice and empathetic and some people aren't and you're lucky if you can find a group of friends that are like that that's really great but you know that doesn't happen all the time for everyone so so yeah you know. and you have, have a house my, my parents would always host like two big you know to the Indian community and they like my mom and then my mom's sisters would come down because my mom had arthritis and she couldn't really cook. So the sisters would come and they'd like cook all these yummy things. It wasn't a potluck. My parents provided the food and drinks, but yeah, the entire community would come and, and it was fun. And like, it was just, I don't know. Robert and I they can't do that because we live in a small apartment, but. Well, yeah, but also right now with the, the virus, I mean, that's gone too. Yeah, that, that was a that. that was like when there was no virus. Was like, right, right. In the I old mean, days. Yeah. <laughs> in the, back in the old days, I mean, there's no way to make friends at this point except for what we're doing. There's just nothing we can do. Like, 
virtual virtually is i mean i was talking to my friend who has a lot of uh i don't know he has some mental issues i'm not sh he's trying to figure out a therapist and figure out what's going on but i told him i was like you know we all complained about the internet <laughs> and now it's like we're like oh thank goodness we have this <laughs> because we yeah we rely on it so much <laughs> Yeah, exactly. um, I always wonder what it would be like to like meet you guys like in person. Would it be like, are you really different in person? I mean, how would it feel? You know, don't you wonder about that sometimes? Is this like oh, watching a movie? You know, absolutely. like where you're I like um, I'm a pixel. I'm I'm just a pixel on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> She's an AI. Everybody ignore her. <laughs> <laughs> I never really think about that. I think we're all not, you know, when you go into society and you don't really know people, you kind of put on a face, like a public face type of thing. But I don't know. I don't do that here. I'm pretty much, I don't really do that anywhere. I'm just me all the time. But, but Jessica, <laughs> that's why I feel um. Oh. I've been I've been itching to ask this, um, Renee. You were you know you were talking about being in your kitchen and cooking, and I am just like you when it comes to that. I love being in the kitchen. I love right. cooking people, and you know, and I struggle with that too. It's the standing that kills me. Oh my and god! I'm just totally going through that right now. That is my issue right now. <laughs> the only. The only way that I've learned to adapt when it comes to that um, is like one of two ways: either do a little bit at a time, like figure Before. out what you can, yep, yeah, yeah. like plan out what you can do right away that's not going to cause you pain, or you know, when it gets to that point where you're just like, "Damn, I can't, I can't stand any longer." Do things in your wheelchair or, you know, if you have like one of those like walkers that have the seat on it, sit down in your walker and do things too. Um, <laughs> that's, that's the best way that you can adapt. I know it's, it's a lot, it, it's a lot to adapt to. I, I well, totally yeah. get it. Because I've, I bought one like a, it's kind of like a cutting board table thing and I can sit down and I can chop things forever. But then you have to get up and wash the stuff or you have to get up onto the stove and stand up. I mean, there's just no way around it. I don't know how people cook sitting down unless you have a, a, a kitchen that's, you know, just to you. Does anybody have a kitchen like that? Because I think only rich people have that. Right? <laughs> I'm not rich. It's supposed oh. ADA compliable apartment, but it is a bunch of, I won't say Shit. the word. I feel fun. bullshit. It is a bunch of bullshit. I'm gonna say because <laughs> counters aren't that low, and when I cook, I can't really see the food. I kind of have to tilt the pan and see what's going on. And then, like the garbage disposal switch, like even Robert, who is able body, yes, he, he has to lean to reach it, and I'm like, how? And I even wrote my land. It's like I don't know why you say this is an ADA apartment, and I. Pointed at, I told them about the things that weren't really accessible and they're like oh well we'll have someone come meet you and go through that with you and I'm like go through what like what how are you gonna move the switch or the guard? I was like unless you're gonna reconstruct this apartment which I don't think you're gonna do you can't do anything about the things that are inaccessible to me mm -hmm. and so yeah I just like it makes me angry when they sell some ADA thing and it's not really ADA like between there's an island and between the island and the fridge I'm always like when I'm in the kitchen cooking I'm always like hitting the fridge the fridge has so many dents in it my <laughs> I've done that I've <laughs> done that when I was in my wheelchair dude there's like I think one thing that really pissed me off was when I had to be in my wheelchair and yeah, it made me realize how narrow my hallway really is. Right, and, right. you know, like when you're walking, walking through it, I mean, you can pass somebody and be fine. But how my hallway is, it's like straight 
and then to like this first left is the bathroom and then the, there's the second one is a bedroom and then down the hall to the right is another bedroom and trying to maneuver my wheelchair to get like to face the bathroom door and then I you know transferred to my walker and you know to use the to use the toilet and I have scraped off so much paint and we had just painted <laughs> like two years before and you just see all these scratches all along the bottom of the wall and I'm like yep yep I did that wheelchair big, like every place I've ever lived in in a wheelchair even when like the place is like pretty I'm all there's all this like buffs in the wall and in the, the corners like you can definitely like oh yeah my wheelchair hit this when I was back up and then it's like big paint yeah did you ever yeah. see like a two-year-old eating at their high chair and then you pick them up and the whole floor is covered with all kinds of dirt and food and stuff on the well after I cook a meal in the kitchen my whole kitchen floor is like that there is junk all over the floor because I can't it drops it falls I can't pick it up it's it's a mess yeah. so that's yeah. where my yeah. husband comes in <laughs> the cleanup crew me too that's why we're lucky to have partners yeah that's why we need those guys around I know yeah right great <laughs> I'm like, oh I dropped that get that for me <laughs> thank you that's terrible. I think the hardest part about being in a wheelchair is when you have pets because like I when I've been in my wheelchair you know I would just subconsciously I'd always look behind me down on the floor to make sure that there's no feline behind my wheelchair and there's been a couple times where I'd look and I go to back up and they just come right there and I'd run over a cat. Oh, no. <laughs> well, I'm I and she's never ever like ever got she like knows like she's just like very aware of the wheelchair and works with me like my friend one time I went to Miami and I was in my manual chair not my power chair and we were just transferring and the dog are <laughs> like you're transferring and she moves this way and this. so i was just like oh i'd like to i wish i could see that because i don't see that obviously she's just like watching me from she's observing what's going on and i'm like oh so yeah lot, i'm fortunate because my dog is like very aware of and she actually likes to sit in my wheelchair like when she's feeling freaked out she'll literally jump and jump into my wheelchair seat and like curl up there and i'm like okay it must be your scent. It's probably just your scent. Yeah, I'm sure I sit in it, so I'm not sure why, but sometimes she'll just go there and curl up and sleep in the wheelchair. <laughs> I'm like, okay. He's the one. My, cats, wanna, are, my oh. cats are idiots then, because <laughs> no, they don't, I, they don't I learn. Did, yeah, and chihuahuas are, uh, I heard chihuahuas are really smart, actually, so I don't know. I don't know if that's what it is, but. She works well with me. She does good. And she sits in my lap, like, when we go. And she, likes totally, like, is observing everything. <laughs> like, she's kind of like a cat, actually. Well, and furry friends are, you know, they're friends, too. So, yeah, definitely. Okay, we'll be here, Renee. Um, Cecil, I think you wanted to say something. Um, you have to know how to adapt. Me? Me? Oh, no. I know it's hard, but you know, we have to learn how to make things easy for ourselves. And uh, that's what I do. I, I use help walkers to help me um get around. And if I get tired to down sit down in the walker, I don't care where I'm at it is it is what it is. Yeah. But um I think Pauline, Pauline what you was saying, like um uh, you understand that you are a great host, right? That's your, you're adding something to your friend's life, whether, whether or not you know it or not. Because, you know, uh, that's the told me, we all have a disability to some are more physical than others. You know, so, uh, so it's like, you can do something that someone someone else can't do. Mm. So you know, it's like it's like 
they don't like to speak. That's what I do. So, you know, I talk and help people. So it's like, so that's what makes me unique. Uh, and that's what uh, I want to make sure I add that to you. you like, so why do people enjoy come to my house? You make them feel good, you know, you know, just by being who you are. Yeah, and, and you know, like even, um, thank you for saying that, because I think it's, I think it's, someone with a disability, we can often forget the contributions that we make to people's lives. Um, and, and so, yeah, I, uh, I, I feel like that even with my husband, I, I'm, I'm like, well, what do I, what do I give you? Right. For those of us who do have partners, but like, even I wish Renee was here right now because I feel like, um, even though we may want to be the host, like we want to be able to be like, if I could, I would be the cook. I would be the cleaner. I would like, I want to make sure that people feel taken care of. And, um, but I can't, and that's just reality. Um, but really at the, at the center of friendship, what is that? Because it's not about coming over and trying your cooking, right? Or it's not about making going somewhere so someone else can clean up after you. There's something deeper it's there. Not, that, it's not about what you can do for others is what you're trying to say. Right, right. Well, I mean, it is in a way because, you know, when you have a friendship, there's always a give and take, right? It's like, what is this friend? I had a, I was making friends with somebody one time and we just started becoming friends and we're really good friends now. I made I made the cut. But she, she said to me one time, she's like, when this is when we first started out, it's like dating almost. She came over and she's like, so look, I'm a wife, I'm a mom, I have two kids, um, I, and I don't have a lot of time. So this is like a trial period, like, because I see the little time that I do have, if I'm going to invest into somebody, into a friendship. I have to know that that's worth the investment, right? And I never looked at friendships that way. Like, like in a way, I was like, what? That's so mean. But we all have limited time. We all have limited energy. Um, we all have limited capabilities of going out. Like, Freddie, you need more assistance and, and going out into the community and meeting up with people. You know, the, you know so we have to be very cognizant of, like, uh, who, am I, who am I pouring into? And are they also pouring back into me? Um, and so I, I think that was a, it was a, a teaching moment for me that I learned from somebody um, about how to look at friendships so that I never looked at it before. Wait, Pauline, can you say what she said to you again? I didn't quite get that, sorry. Oh no, um, she was just saying how she had to kind of feel out if this is a friendship that she wanted to invest in. And she used the word invest. Right? Um, uh, well, I, I, oh, I'm sorry, Denise. Do, wait. Oh, so yeah, I, I, I kind of understand that because I almost feel like that right now. Like, just because I, you know, I have the spinal cord injury and I, my pain, some days are good, some days are bad. And it's just like, I, so I kind of, and what your I mean I don't know your friend has the kids and you know but like even I don't have kids but like I almost feel like my disability is like my child's life because I have to manage it and everybody that has a disability you have to figure out how to manage it to be able to do do what you want to do. so like like if you want to cook to be able to do it maybe the walker and sit in the walker and you know like so we all have to manage our disabilities and mental disabilities too like i i often think mental disabilities are not people like don't think they have to manage that and i'm like no you have to you have to manage it because then you are affecting other people sometimes and or you know messing up your path because you're like not paying attention to your mental disability and it's the same for physical disability you you know you got to manage so all the disabilities you have to manage it somehow so you can be in the world yeah yeah yes. <laughs> I, I, i'm beyond with you 
everyone you meet is trying to turn their best to, I'm just going to say it, to hold their shit together. <laughs> you know, that's, that's the best way I can put it. You know, we we all trying to hold ourselves together, you know, especially with this coronavirus thing. You know, um, I mean, you know, we, we're, just, we're just doing the best we can. And uh, and sometimes the, what helps me is if I take my mind off myself and ask somebody else or tell somebody else, how are you doing? You know, that, that makes me feel better. You know, I may, may be having a, one of my days like P was saying, like P was saying, uh, having a bad day, but, well, let me text one of my friends how you doing, and just we can talk about their problem for a little bit. And that would help me take a little time off my problem, if that makes sense. Yeah. But uh, like I said earlier, mm -hmm. we're all dealing with shit <laughs> the best we, we know how. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think one thing that really needs to be um, talked about, especially now, is mental illness mm -hmm. that is a big one and you know with everybody being isolated is, is. would you say denise i'm sorry i couldn't understand you oh i i said friendship has got to be a give give and take if you don't have the um if you can't get if you can't give some something something is pretty much like oh I give and give and give but there's no there's Getting no um, reciprocal thing you know like um, one time I was friends with someone and she just wanted me to drive her everywhere. And I'm like, well, what am I getting out of it? You know, like, and it was all, it was, it was okay for me to do that, but she never, I, I would be the only one giving a ride, and I felt like, why can't I just meet you somewhere so I don't have to give you rides all the time? But then, but she would be like. Oh, she would just make up an excuse or something, and then I'd have to pick her up and take her there, and then take her back to her house. And it's just it's too much, you know, sometimes. But, but I think there has to be a give or take. That's my only thing. <laughs> right, right. I think Jessica was going to say something about mental illness as well, but uh, looks like she has to go to the well, bathroom. I, go ahead. I'd wait to like come back, but yeah, I mean, like one of the things I, I don't like about this time is that everyone refers to it as social distancing. And I actually looked it up and, and they said, you know, during, I think, you know, back in times when plagues and stuff would hit, they called it social distancing because the, the definition was like, you stay socially away from other people in order not to but i was like but now you know we can use other words so i think using physical distancing is a much better word because i do have a lot of friends who are artists and musicians and the way they kind of deal with their mental illness is by making art and playing music and going out and doing it and being in the world and when all of this happened they couldn't do that anymore and then hearing the word social distancing all the time, I think it really freaks people out because they think like, oh my God, I can't be social. But you can be social, you just have to do it differently. So I think like the word, and I do think words are important because when everybody keeps using the word social distancing all the time for a person with a mental illness, that really sinks into their brain instead of saying physical distancing. So that's like something I talk about a lot, like 
And yeah. sometimes I think social distancing because people say it so much and then I'm like, Oh, no. Let me just say physical it, makes, it makes sense. I didn't think about that. I mean, and you're right. It should have been called physical distancing. You know, and but we're, we're, sorry. And at North Carolina, the state, like the governor, does call it physical distancing because I think they are taking an account to the mental state of people, you know, during this quarantine and people that have mental illness like that social distance is not a word that works very well for them um, all the I don't know. literature the, from the state oh, no. they say they use the word physical distancing which i'm like really i'm very proud of north carolina for doing that um, <laughs> I, I wish i was proud of iowa my governor stuck <laughs> <laughs> you live again <laughs> jessica oh yeah iowa yeah yeah, yeah. Do you put Somehow we had a governor who's like, he, you know, cool, you know, he's like, you know, he's doing things in a very logical, practical way as far as opening the state and stuff like that. So. Yeah. And, and Jessica, what did you want to say about mental illness before you went to the restroom? Yeah, I had to pee. Sorry, I couldn't hold it anymore. <laughs> That's fine. And then, and then Denise has something to say. Yeah. I think. Sorry, I have my phone laying down. My arms are so tired from holding my phone. Um, I can hear your voice. Um, I think mental illness really needs to be discussed a lot more. I mean, not just like with us, but just society in general. Because, I mean, as, as a person with mental illness, you know, depression, anxiety, PTSD, you know, it, it affects people more deeply when they have mental illness, I think, you know, especially with the isolation and, um, you know, people aren't out as much as they used to be. And um, that has affected me greatly. I mean, it has affected my moods every day. Um, I, and I'm, and I'm not ashamed to admit it because like people, People need to, people like me need to speak up and say, hey, I have, I have mental illness. I have issues. You know, I'm, I'm not crazy, <laughs> even though I feel like I am half the time. Um, but yeah, it just, I, I think that needs, there needs to be a spotlight on that topic in particular. Um, because, and I, and I know that the suicide rates are going up right now too because of that and it's really it's heart-wrenching to hear you mean like a top that mean like focus on around the virus issue that kind of thing is that that's what you mean yes yeah okay. i mean it's just it, it affects me more now than it than it did before you know because now i have to keep my health in mind when i go out and do things i never go in any business without a mask, even though 98% of people around me are not wearing a mask, which where do you live? live? No end, but I, where? it just, I, I, I think that, yeah, mental illness, especially right now, there needs to be a spotlight on it. People need to talk about it more. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Denise. Um, I was just going to say, how is, um, so, they say social distancing, and they also say, um, we're all in this together. Like, how's that, like, I know. Social, <laughs> I don't understand. That's Isn't great. That it's almost like an oxymoron, really, if you think about it. Like, isn't that contradicting, like, to say we're it all in together, yeah. but then they say social distancing? What? <laughs> yeah, I know. It's very like, contradicting. How's that? Yeah. Like, contradicting, like, saying one thing and that, like, it's the opposite, you know? We're not, we're not all in it's this a, together. We're all apart, actually, more. Yeah, they say to you. That's why they suicide rate gone up. 
Yeah, I mean, you're supposed to check in on your neighbors who are elderly and, like, you're saying, like, um, who might have depression. And and, uh, even, like, kids, like, there's, like, apparently what the teachers are saying is that the child abuse reporting, I don't know if this really has to do with mental illness. Oh, no. It's kind of not fair that I'm brought together. Um, The child abuse reporting is way, way, way down. The reason, because the kids aren't in school, and the people that usually see the abuse are the teachers. They're making the reports. So we don't, there's a lot of stuff going on in the homes right now. I don't think it's exactly mental illness, but there's abuse, there's um, domestic violence, and, you know, of course, depression, like you're talking about. Um, And uh, I don't know, like you said, with social distancing, how do we check in on our neighbors? How do we, how are we going to be there for each other? You know, I just, I don't know. It's, it's a hard one. I'm still trying to figure that one out. I, I, I th- that's actually kind of easy. Just go over and knock on the door and then back up. <laughs> <laughs> I've gone and had a lot of friends. Hey, I'm here before. for you, but I'm not here. Okay. <laughs> we're all wearing masks and we're sitting, you know, we're sitting in a distance from each other, but. If the weather's nice, we just kind of sit far away from each other. And, you know, so there is socialness going on. It's just, like I said, you just have to do it differently. And, and that's we like, all have to adapt to the situation. Everybody has, like, you know, Cecil was saying, we have to adapt, you know, to cook. And, but I just feel now the whole world, you know, the whole world essentially is trying to adapt to how we function as a society right now and and that's why we we're really good to, that's why disabled people are so great to have because we can be like oh just do this just do that i deal with that kind of stuff all the time that's right that's so that's totally true we're isolated all the time what's the difference <laughs> I I think it's great. I mean, they're coming around and like we got more stuff online now. We got classes online that were never online before, you know, all this stuff to do. I almost feel guilty about feeling good about it. You know, it's like, it's like, welcome to my world, you people. Where have you been? (laughs) Well, and you know, I feel like, um, I, I feel like that's such a good point that a lot of people with disabilities are isolated. Like Freddie brought that up. Um, with his experience uh, and you know even though this community or this zoom call was created in response to the COVID like I hope it continues throughout because there's no need for anybody to feel isolated and COVID is just kind of like jump-started us to be able to go into the homes of people who've traditionally been isolated and for them to come out you know, so I feel like it's an exciting thing. Like, and like, I don't know, my heart like feels for Freddie. Uh, I mean, I like, I'm kind of more busy now than I was before COVID. <laughs> right. Because now I'm like, oh, I have to call and I have to do that. And I mean, I'm like, I've been on spiritual retreats online. I've been on physical yoga type of retreats online. I'm doing this online. Oh my God. I'm, I get tired. I don't even know why. Oh my God. Cause I'm doing all the stuff that I never used to do. You know, it's Jessica, <laughs> I guess if you think of, you know, if you think about it and it kind of plays onto what Renee said, you know, there's all these things online now that weren't before and you know, they're accommodating people from everywhere from us to you know, able-bodied people, and you know, it just, I guess in a way, it shows the rest of society kind of what disability life is like. I mean, yeah, yeah. It that, I think, that, yeah, it, it really, it really does. I just don't think the rest of society realizes it. <laughs> right, right. I never thought about it like that. Yeah. Yeah. Me neither. I I feel very fortunate to be able to go out and have the capability to have my own transportation. But there were three years where I didn't and we live out in the country and there's no paratransit. So like I was very isolated. And um, so I do feel 
a, a kindred spirit for anyone that does feel like they're trapped in their home in a, in a sense. And so I'm so excited that, I mean, I'm not excited that this happened, but I am excited that it is now teaching people and leveling the playing field. So like Freddie, you can like, now you can make friends all over the world, right? <laughs> yeah. I think he wants to say something. It's muted. He's muted. Oh, there it is. I, to I totally agree with that statement. That's the good thing about the internet. And I'm so glad that I found your channel. I'm a big <laughs> YouTube watcher. I can spend like five, six hours on YouTube watching different channels. I, I like to watch wow. uh, different vloggers and whatnot. I know, and you haven't done anything all day, right? I know, I feel really bad when I do that, but I do it all the time now. <laughs> well, I'm the same way, darling. I sit on my ass all day long. I <laughs> even kind of actually understand what you're saying, like, because I, I don't know. When I was younger, I did hang out a lot. and I was, you know, I'm in a band, so, like, playing shows, you're hanging out. So there's this big social thing going on. But then, I don't know, like, after I became disabled, I was just like, no, I must be productive. I must do things. I must. Like, I have to finish this artwork, or I have to finish this writing, or I have to. And, like, I'm kind of more obsessed about being productive. And even when I'm in so much pain, it's hard for me to be, like, like, I'm like, it's part, I literally have to talk to myself like, Priya, you are in so much pain. It is okay for you to sit and just watch a bunch of YouTube videos and just, you know, go on Facebook and scroll for a second. And maybe it's just because all these things are available now that really are distracting. And I'm like, fighting hard not to get distracted. So I don't really know what that mental makeup is for me. Well, like, you know, so here's um, Kathy Heller. She's a teacher and she says the opposite of depression is purpose. Mm -hmm. And so. I, I like that. Yeah. Isn't the opposite of depression joy? No, the opposite. Well, this is her quote and I resonate with it so much more because how do you find joy? Right? Through, pur Through purpose. Through purpose. Oh, right. Yeah. So the opposite of depression is purpose. And so I think yeah, that's what has happened, even for me, when all of this hap this all of this stuff happened, I went on full force, like I'm gonna do my show, I'm gonna do all these interviews, all right, let's do this Zoom call. And I just like piled it on, like you, Priya, were talking about. And so um, and I think for me and my husband, our, we have a catering business and an Airbnb, and so it's all tourism-based. And since all that shut down, his whole company shut, our companies have shut down. And so because of that, he's just flowing in the wind, right? And like has no purpose. And he gets so frustrated and angry and bored and like no direction, like a wanderer. And... I'm like busy doing my thing, but I took that on. I created that. I said, no, I'm going to use this time. I'm like, nobody's leaving their house. It's perfect time to get them for interviews. <laughs> so, um, right. Pauline, because I feel like that with my partner, Robert, like he fortunately has a job and he like throws, you know, he's very, like I always tell people, I have the physical disability. <laughs> he has the vet because he's like super ADD and <laughs> really? like, disorganized and just like all, all like so like you know but can you remind me to do this can you remind me to do this? and I'm like why don't you put a reminder on your phone like I'm trying to teach him how to teach himself to remind himself instead of depending on me to do it but like I remember like when we were we were living in this house that we had gotten evicted from like about almost two years ago now and I was really productive. Like I was in all these art shows and I was doing a lot of stuff. And he said to me, he's like, oh, it's good we go in that house because we weren't very productive. And I was like, actually, I was really productive. <laughs> <laughs> and, that's, and then when he said, I did, and then I told him all the stuff I did while I lived in that house. I was like, I did this, I did this, I was doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. And he's like, I was like, I don't know what you were doing, but. <laughs> You, you 
I was the productive one. You were productive. So don't we this, don't do this we stuff on me because I'm, I'm productive. <laughs> so that's what I tell him. Yes, Jessica. Okay. First of all, <laughs> sorry about screaming at my cat. Like she just came flying at me on my coffee table and almost knocked it over. I'm not kidding. Like the whole thing shook. <laughs> it scared the crap out of me. And I'm just like, really? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Priya. <laughs> that just kind of happened out of nowhere. <laughs> you know, I'm going to tell you, Jessica, I didn't really even notice because when I talk, I'm all like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I'm like, I, yeah, like I, I, I was screaming at my cat. Um, <laughs> oh, anyway, cool. I guess I, while, while y'all were talking, I just got a text message. I got some really good news. Um, my sister and my nephews are coming down to watch the fireworks and I haven't oh. seen my nephews since Yay. February so I'm really excited to see them oh my I've gosh missed, I know I've, I've missed the baby I just where do you live because fireworks have been cancelled all over the world where do you live that has I live in I live in Iowa so of course Iowa. like everything's wide open there's like no restrictions anymore because my governor's an idiot and yeah like the numbers are like <laughs> they're, they're they've tripled they have tripled in like the last week i think the highest one that we had see today's saturday um there's it was like within 24 hours like wednesday thursday 679 new cases yeah yeah and yeah that is the most we have had i yeah. think um so yeah. oregon's and, the same where i am it's going completely crazy right now we're in so much more danger now than we were when this whole thing started i mean the rates yeah. have gone up 175 percent in the last two weeks it's just been insane yeah we, so. and it's it's gonna be worse because it's fourth of july weekend so um but me and my parents booked a cabin um in big bear and like i think we booked it a month ago and they they said they were gonna have fireworks all up until like two days ago they canceled the fireworks so we couldn't we couldn't back out because like we lose money you know we right lose yeah, so we're just gonna just sit in our cabin for sitting tomorrow. So let's make paper mache fireworks, everybody. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, like I live in a small town and they're shooting them off, like just on like the outskirts of town. And so there's um, a Masonic temple, like practically across the street, like just south of me. And that's where we went last year. We just sat in the parking. You know, we had some camping chairs and we just sat in the parking lot and um, did that. And I know that Jenny and the boys are safe. I know that um, they have been isolating just like we have. And, you know, especially with Jaden and his, his um, immune system, you know, she has to be extra careful. Yeah. So I'm not worried about kissing and hugging them because I'm gonna do it anyway. I I gotta see them. I gotta see my babies. So, yeah. um, well, um, you know, sorry. Go ahead. But yeah, like that's our plan. We're just gonna sit in the parking lot and hope and pray that nobody else has that idea. Because I will. I'm a loud mouth. I have no filter, and if I see something, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna run my mouth. I've had enough of these idiots around here so well yeah. um well uh, shame 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 that's what i like to do right now with <laughs> people and they well, well damn they should be a shame i'm sorry but they should be yeah. i will point out stupid people i cannot handle stupidity very well i just can't it's like i feel my brain twitch when i see people like this <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, um, so why don't we, um, since you probably have to get ready for your family to come, I'm so excited for you. And we are 10 minutes beyond um, our normal cutoff time. Um, but I really think bringing it full circle back, at Jessica, in the beginning of our conversation when it was just you and I coming up with 
cute shirts that let people know like you're immunocompromised, like we're not dating, step away, you know? So like, <laughs> I, think, I think that would be so cool. You should come up with some things and hey, everyone's doing yeah. it these days. Right. So, <laughs> yeah. so, oh, see, I'm one of those people like, I'll take it a step further and be like completely vulgar about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's just that's, me. I'll keep it clean, but that's just me. <laughs> I think that's the charm of your personality, Jessica. I think, I think, uh, smart and oh, yeah, like, like you should have seen like this, like when I, when I was. When I was gonna get my first socket, um, I wanted it. I, you know, when I look down at it, I don't want to feel like what's the word I'm looking for. I don't want to feel like shame, like you know, shame about it. Mm -hmm. I want to like find something that's gonna make me laugh. Like I want, I just want to find a way to laugh about it. And so, can you paint it? What? Can you paint it? Um, no, I, I don't know how that would work. Um, but what I did was, you know, I w took to the internet and I was looking at all these different like fabric sites because you can get like different fabrics and yeah. so you can get like t shirts and then, you know, it'll be part of, you know, they'll put it on the socket. Um, well, I found <laughs> I found this this uh this fabric and it had all these cuss words on it like you name it it was on there well they wouldn't put the <laughs> it was so funny because it put my prosthesis in a really uncomfortable position <laughs> um but I guess the lab that you that they send the sockets to it's their policy not to put things like that on there I'm like but, but this is me like I don't want to go to a job interview and have people see that, right? Oh, I well, I, I'm getting I'm getting to a point. I promise. Um, so one of one of my friends, I sent her the fabric, and she made a sleeve specifically for my socket. So I wore it over my socket to like PT and I'm, you know, I had my pant leg rolled up. So I'm just like showing it off and all the looks I got from people, it made my day. <laughs> it was <I'm> fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah, yeah. I know we didn't do, we haven't done the wins and stuff like in the past two weeks, which is fine. I, it doesn't bother me, but I did want to tell everyone that, I'm very excited because there's this art space, it's called Revolve, and they were actually accessible, which I actually really liked about it. Um, but now, because with COVID, they're like thinking of closing the space because, you know, they don't know when it's going to open. They don't want to have to pay rent. So I think they're going to start doing things virtually. And they asked me because they want to have a board and make it inclusionary. So they asked me because I always talk about disability. So they, they asked me to be on the board. I'm really excited about, yeah. and I'm going to do like something for the 30th anniversary for the ADA on their, like they, I think they do a zoom thing. So I'm going to do it and I'll, I'll invite one to it. I don't know what I'm going to do yet, but I'm going to curate it. I hate that word, to be honest. I hate the word curate. But anyway, I would curate it. <laughs> and like, uh, so yeah, so I'll let everyone know like when it's happening, if you can tune in. Um, I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking. Maybe having even some disabled people kind of talk about why it's important. So maybe I'll have some crypt chatters come in and be like, like Tylee and John and Cecil and Jessica and all you people. Like I'll be like, Come and say something for five minutes of why the APA is so important. You know? Absolutely. I would love to do that. Oh my gosh, congratulations, Priya. Yeah, I was really excited. Actually, it was like I just we went to this like grocery store that has it's like one of those salvage grocery stores where everything's really super cheap. I don't know how it works. Like sometimes you'll get a bag and it'll be like a little stamp. <laughs> The crackers are a little stale. Like you gotta eat the food. Yeah. That's gross. <laughs> <laughs> but not everything.
everything is like that. Like, but sometimes you'll be like, oh, oh, yeah. But so I don't even know how they get away with that. But, but anyway, people have been going there, and especially now because I think everyone's like with work and stuff. People are going there probably even more. But like Robert really wanted to go there, and I like actually don't like it because they don't really follow the procedure of. But I think because the governor was like, if you're a grocery store, everyone has to wear a mask, like people going in and people working there and you have to, so that I think the governor said that, so they have, I noticed when we went in this time, they actually had the six feet marked off and, you know, put up protectors for the register people and everyone was wearing masks. But I bumped into the guy there like by accident, like he was standing in line and then I, you know, and then sometimes it's hard for me to recognize people when they're wearing their masks. I'm like, who is, I think I know that person. So then I bumped into him. So I was just like, oh, this was meant to be. I actually was meant to come to this grocery store that I didn't want to come to because I bumped into him. So he's like, oh yeah, I've been thinking of contacting you. I want you to be on this board. I'll email you. And so I was like, okay, cool. So yeah, I'm going to do like a 30th anniversary for the ADA, like maybe just towards the end of the month, like not like on the date, because I like to do things not on date because like then everybody's celebrating on the 26th and there's so many other things to go to. So I like to do it on not that day. So then people can actually come to my day, my thing, what I'm doing. So. that's cool let us know definitely what you're doing yeah. i'll put yeah. it are you are you in the crip chat group jessica or yeah oh yeah 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 i'll put it in there and so anybody you know, not part of the facebook group um should get on the facebook group um in the emails that i send out with the zoom link on every thursday there's a link to the facebook group if you um don't can't find it um uh, but it's called crip chat club well crypt chat via zoom i think it's called um but yeah get on there and keep us posted if anyone's working on anything i'm not i'm not against anybody promoting stuff so you know that that's uh related to something to the community so um anyone that wants I to pay, and i just want to tell you pauline pauline and i talked about she's like you should start a patreon i'm working because when i went there i was like oh i have to have different tiers of things what should I offer? But so I'm figuring it out. And so I, I am figuring it out. Awesome. So I'm, I, on. Yeah, I, I want to include the video, like the interviews I've been doing with, I don't want to call them interviews because I think they're like talks, more like talking about disability. So I'm going to have those like available for one of the tiers. And Whoa. You know, crazy shirt. And, so I'll post it when I actually get that done all. I'll post it. Well, if you need any support, let me know. And then Renee had to say something, and then we're going to close oh, it. I'm sorry. Last week I did this too. I, I asked a question at the end about BCI, and today I have another question. Did, and has anybody heard of the Feldenkrais method? It's a movement method made, I don't know when, 70s, 60s. It's uh, um, but developed by a man named Moshe Feldenkrais. Does anybody know that? It's about... It's supposed to be for neurological issues. Okay. I just was wondering. I don't think it's very popular, but if you look on the web, you can find it all over the place. So I was just wondering if anybody had any opinion about it. That's why I was asking, because I like what you guys tell me. So there you go. Aww, okay. So I'm sorry. I can't help with that. But okay. um, <laughs> but you know what, um, Renee? There's a lot of people on Crip Chat Facebook group who's not on the calls, You get probably because of timing. Um, so maybe just post it on the Facebook group. Anyone have any thoughts on blah, 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 whatever. It's with this. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. So, um, you know, anybody, we got a, a taker for someone to guest hosting next week. So anyone else that would like to guest host or, um, if you're not comfortable guest hosting, um, if you have a topic that you, is like burning on you that you'd like to have a, a conversation about at one please like just let us know and we can facilitate it but it's at least it's something that's meeting your needs so let us know um what your thoughts are oh and priya started the instagram so if you haven't joined instagram account get on instagram thank you so much priya for all of your effort on that i yeah i'm i'm learning <laughs> 
I'm, I'm like an Instagram person. I'm not really, a, I go on Facebook, but I'm more Instagram because I, you know, I'm a photographer. Mm -hmm. a I want to add you, Priya. I haven't added you yet. For what? For on Instagram? For Instagram. I don't know how to add you. I uh, don't know your a, name. She's under well, DIY. I, know your name. I have a DIY. I have a personal account and a DIY abled account. So okay. DIY okay. abled. You know, I'll put a post in the okay. Facebook. I'll put a post in the Facebook every, to ask everybody if they want to share their Instagram handles so we can all follow each other that way, too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. All right, guys. Hey, I'm Cecil. Yay. Okay. I am so excited to have new friends. So could air before I have to go to San Diego again. <laughs> Well, enjoy the nature, Denise. Ha and yeah. have a safe, you know. It's by, it's by, it's by a road, so sorry, it's kind of nosy. Um, it's okay. I've been, I've been muting you because to help with the noise, so um, <laughs> no worries. But enjoy your family um, and everybody, yeah. and whoever yeah. gets an opportunity for fireworks. Enjoy yeah. that. Um, hopefully, Cecil and Freddie come back next week, and um, hopefully, this has been at least contributed to your life in be, some way. Be safe with the fireworks. Yeah, oh, everyone. Of course, you ain't gotta worry about me. Trust me, I'm <laughs> I'm I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. Everyone, see you guys later. Thank it was great to meet you, Cecil and Freddie. I hope you guys well. come back next week. Yeah. <laughs> yes, will, me yeah. too. All right. Yes. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye.